Well, hey guys, I'm gonna do yet another chip amp video, and this time we're gonna look at the TDA 7267, one of my most favorite, or the most favorite of mine audio chip amplifier ever made. And uh, I'm talking about these lower power types, you know, one or two watts of power. And I will explain why they are my favorite of all time. Well, it's a very easy chip to use. It doesn't require a lot of parts. The top row of pins are all ground for heat sinking. They use a heavier pin so the heat can dissipate through it easier. Now the chip comes in two different flavors. The, 70, the TDA 7267 and the 7267A version. The difference is really just power dissipation. This larger chip has more pins to dedicate for a heat sink, therefore it can dissipate more power, and you can use it at a higher voltage. The, it's a really the same amplifier inside, it's just that you can run this one at 15 volts, 8 ohms, this one 12 volts, 8 ohms, or 4 ohms, 9 volts, and probably about 11 volts, 4 ohms with this one. Okay, well, I'll look mainly at this 8-pin dual inline package here because it compares with the LM386, which we just looked at in another video. Let's see why I like this one better, how it compares, you know, some of the positive and negatives of the two chips. Well first of all this chip can put out more power into a load at the same voltage and it can handle 4 ohms load. That's a that's a big plus for this chip. We'll look at that later when we uh, do some measurements. LM386 it just you, know, you hook it up to 4, four ohm loads and the uh, output kind of collapses. Yeah, it doesn't really increase much when you hook up a 4 ohm load where it, it sh there should be quite a bit of increase in output power. Now the gain is fixed in this one. You can adjust it in the LM386. However, they set the gain just at the right level so you can use it for uh, computer speaker amplifiers or you know amplifying these music players. So the gain is set at a good level for doing that. However, the advantage of the LM386 is that it does have adjustable gain. So if you're making a guitar amplifier, you need some more gain. Or you need less gain, whatever. <clears throat> so it depends how you look at it. Having adjustable gain or fixed gain. Fixed gain, of course, requires less parts. The sound quality quality of this chip is excellent. I didn't really do a full test. I just hooked it up to an 8 ohm load, powered it out about half a watt, and I looked at the you know the spectrum analyzer results. And it put 0 0.07 uh, total harmonic distortion. <clears throat> that is impressive for you know a five and dime chip amp. I mean, you know, like I said in my previous videos, what I consider to be hi-fi is the amplifier has to put out less than one-tenth of a percent of total harmonic distortion. Now, again, I didn't do a full test on this, but just seeing that number is pretty impressive. So it's a good sounding chip. Another thing is the uh, quiescent current supply. The LM386 might have the advantage there. Well, it does have the advantage because it only draws like 4 or 5 milliamps of uh, current when sitting idle. This one will draw a little bit more. I'll have to measure it. I think it's like 15. So if you want to use it for like a 9 volt battery type supplied amplifier, this one, even just sitting idle, will run your battery down quicker because it is drawing 
more current. So yeah, the LM386 might be better there. But given, given all the other features of this chip, I think it's the best chip that was ever produced in a low power audio chip. Bad news is, well, they quit making them. They got to sell enough of them, and um, just the way the market's going these days, this didn't fit in, and uh, so it was made obsolete. However, you can still get them, mainly on eBay. Um, I don't think it's a counterfeited chip because it wasn't real popular. I I can get these from a place, I think it's called Delbani or something like that. What they do is they take boards from companies, you know, they were, they ended a run of a product and they had leftover circuit boards. Well, this company goes in and recovers parts from those boards and resells them. So they're, you know, they're as good as new. And I had some brand new ones I bought from DigiKey when they were making these and I compared them to the ones I got. They matched perfectly, output power and everything. Um, these have short thermal and short circuit protection. The LM386 doesn't, which I forgot to mention. Um, I tested everything, and uh, yeah, they were uh, they were authentic chips. So, well, I said a whole bunch on that. Why well, I think it's great. Hook it up, do some measurements here, and see how it works. Okay, here's the circuit all set up. It only needs four capacitors. You can even, if you're running off battery, you can even do away with that one, though I would still have it. I don't have the SVR capacitor on the LM386, which I would recommend. And this needs six capacitors. You don't have to use the input capacitor, but it's good practice to have that there if you're not sure if you're getting any DC on your input. And of course there's <clears throat> a few other resistors that it needs. This this resistor and this go to a indicator light so it's not really part of the circuit. But yeah it, it does need more parts than this that's for sure. Okay here's how it sounds. Well, to me, it sounds excellent, really. It seems to have more bass punch than the LM386. You know, this thing can put out a lot of drive current compared to the LM386. Okay, it's time to do a power test. I added a potentiometer on the input because the discrete steps of the volume control on the music player it makes it hard to home in right at the point of clipping. And I had to stabilize the power supply better. I added this capacitor across the power supply and I adjusted it to 9 volts under load because the voltage sags you know these really aren't the best way to measure power on these perf boards or, or on these breadboards so uh, try to do as best as I can do here so here's the waveform on the scope and as you see as I crank it up it starts clipping because uh, you know, it just runs out of headroom and the top and bottom of the waveform get flat topped. Well, it's kind of hard to uh, adjust that perfectly. So I'll use the spectrum analyzer function here. And this uh, bluish wave here, waveform, is actually amplitude versus frequency instead of uh, amplitude versus time. So if I adjust that, you know, as I turn it up and it clips more, see how those spikes really grow in size? That's because that's a lot of harmonics being generated. I really only want to see this here, which is my one kilohertz signal. The rest of it would just be noise floor, just, you know, random noise. So if I 
adjust that just so those spikes are gone. I know I'm not clipping right about. You want to hit that point perfectly. Eh, that's eh, maybe a little bit lower. I need a really accurate potentiometer. Okay, so our RMS voltage is 2.69 volts. So we put in 2. Point, I just say 2.7. Square that. There's a glare on the calculator. Divide that by our load impedance. So this uh, chip is making 0.91 watts, just shy of a watt into an 8 ohm load at 9 volt supply. Now if I use 12 volts, you, know, you get a lot higher, maybe close to 2 watts. However, uh, just testing uh, 9 volts for this chip. Now this chip will handle 4 ohm loads, so I'm going to set up and measure the uh, power at 4 ohm loads. See what we get. Okay, have the 4 ohm load hooked up. I'm measuring both channels, using both channels I should say. One shows 2.46, the other is 2.53. And that's because I'm measuring one channel at the load and what the other channel at the chip and of course the the grounds do you know tie those together a bit but you know compared to this short thick wire that the scopes ground is would be higher impedance so it really doesn't affect things much however uh, measuring at the chip does show a little bit higher voltage because um, other contact resistances there so if we say 2.46 at that glare squared divided by 4 so we're hitting a 1.5 watts now let's see what we get if we use 2.53 they're hitting 1.6 watts so you can see how you know just having a different measuring point uh, changes the output you know the output power measurement I should say now if I had a uh, you know soldered this all up on a perf board or something you know, I might be get closer measurements to 1.6 so yeah um, I know the video is getting kind of long, but these things you have to consider when you're measuring things. And uh, I know there's other things I, I could be doing better even, but uh, you know, this is as good as I can do it here on the perf board. Well, now let's go back to the LM386 and see what it can do. Okay, moved over to the LM386. Already took the measurement to save time. Uh, 8 ohms for doing 0.6 watts, 605 milliwatts. So yeah, in the other video I was only getting, I think it was like 0.46 or something. I figured I could do better. So uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's not too bad for the LM386, but now the interesting thing would be the 4 ohm load. And now with the 4 ohm loads, I already took the measurement. And uh, yeah, it's just not much more. Pretty much just like the data sheet shows. It just fails to produce much more power at, with a 4 ohm load. 0.65 so it went up you know roughly 50 milliwatts or so you know hardly anything so it shows you how the uh, TDA 70, uh, 7267 doesn't collapse under load like that you know it was it's doing almost double the power 
well more than double the power 1.5 watts versus this and uh, if you notice when I turn it up into clipping notice how the top clips before the bottom well that's the design of the amplifier it, this is an older design they don't use um, bootstrapping for the upper output transistor you know, it's just a quasi complementary output type stage and it, it can't swing as high in the top transistor as it can in the bottom so you get clipping and you see all those harmonic spikes now and that's the reason it can't handle the 4 ohm load better than you know a, a newer amplifier well there you have it that's uh, the power test of the two amplifiers and uh, why I like the TDA 7267 better thanks for watching my videos and really appreciate everyone's subscriptions and everything and stay tuned and we'll have more for you catch you later